It is cold today. Uh, right now it is 8 degrees Fahrenheit um, out there. Okay, Google, what is 8 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? Minus 13. So anyway, yeah, it's super cold, um, but pretty good conditions. It looks like the sun is actually going to be out um, pretty soon here. So I thought um, that it would be cool to do some um, energy tests in cold weather and I think 8 degrees Fahrenheit qualifies as cold for all practical purposes. Um, yeah, so uh, the freeways around Grand Rapids sort of form this loop. Um, I'm not sure how many miles it is yet, but um, anyway, I'm going to drive around that loop um, several times with different parameters and uh, first I want to see what the average uh, watt hours per mile is in super cold temperature and also keeping the cabin at a comfortable temperature while driving really fast. I mean not really fast but um, you know freeway plus speeds as opposed to like city driving where there's less wind, less chill factor, um, all that kind of stuff. After going on the long uh, cross-country trip um, I'm expecting usage, energy usage, to be in the low 400s. Um, that's what I ended up using to calculate how much energy I would need um, on a given leg of the trip, and generally that was accurate if there wasn't something else like altitude um, taking energy. So that's pretty high, uh, actually. I would expect the car at cruising freeway speeds to be you know, somewhere in the, I don't know, maybe 350 or below per mile, but it's winter. So the battery has to be warm, the cabin has to be warm. Um, at freeway speeds, the wind is, the super cold wind is blowing by the car, blowing by the battery, uh, cooling things off. So, um, and if you've watched my trip videos, um, I was, it was the first long distance one that I had done, so we like dress super warm so we didn't have to use the heater as much. But I found that um, using the heater really doesn't use that much energy relative to how much driving the car um, requires energy. So anyway, I'm gonna do some tests today. Um, I'm actually at the supercharger. Uh, you can kind of see it over there. I'm at the supercharger right now, um, mainly because I want to use, well, I want the battery to be, um, you know, fully warmed up, fully ready to go, so I'm starting, so I'm not using excess energy warming up the car. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start at a um, preheated state, um, do a lap or two, and then change parameters and maybe do some new laps and see what happens. Okay, so uh, it looks like the battery is warmed, uh, so regen is uh, fully available in this area. So um, I think I got plenty of battery, I'm at 76%. Ah, there you go, 8 degrees. So um, I think that's good enough, I think I'm ready to go. So I just put the vehicle in drive and uh, you'll notice that my uh, regen is only half available, so um, I'm not sure what the deal is. Um, but I'm gonna go anyway. I probably won't need much more regen than that for uh, freeway driving. But anyway, that's kind of weird. I thought the battery was uh, fully ready. Maybe it's too cold. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep the temperature at, uh, I think I'll keep it at 75, because once I get going on the freeway, it's, it's gonna cool down. And then these are my settings. Um, gear. So I don't have eco or uh, range mode on. I'm going to keep range mode off, um, at least for this first leg of the trip. So, all right, here we go. All right. So I took my coat off um, so that the heater, for the most part, is going to be what's keeping me comfortable um, to make it as real a drive as possible.
here's the on-ramp. So I'm not going to be gunning um, anything. I mean, I'm not going to drive super wimpy, but I'm just going to sort of be mellow, use an average rate of acceleration, um, basically simulate um, relaxed but normal driving. at the supercharger after the first loop. It was almost 35 miles. I used a little over 15 kilowatt hours and I averaged 444 watt hours per mile. So pretty close to what I was predicting at um, 450. Um, now the caveat is um, my battery had not completely warmed up apparently and it it finished warming up about halfway through. So I might do that loop again to control for that because that's gonna take some extra energy to warm up the battery. And also there was something interesting uh, that happened right around the time that the battery finished warming up and that is that the uh, temperature of the heated air decreased after the battery was uh, completely warmed. So I'm not quite sure if that was due to the fact that I was on the freeway and and um, and you know the high wind speeds and the super cold temperatures just ev eventually caught up with the heater um, relative to the heater's capacity. But there was a noticeable um, decrease in the temperature of the blowing air. Um, also, the the car. The car also did say that it was 75 in here. I checked the app and the app was saying that the interior temperature of, of the vehicle was 75 and that's what I had it set to. So maybe it just, maybe it shut off uh, some heat capacity just because the temperature had already been reached. I'm not really sure, um, but I know, um, well, I'm not sure what I was gonna say there. Um, it's just an interesting uh, coincidence. I'm not sure the relationship between the air heater and um, energy use to the battery heater. So um, another thing that's rather interesting about the air heaters up here is that the driver side air is much warmer than the pa than the air coming out of the passenger um, side vents, um, as well as warmer than the air that comes out here. Let me show you. For uh, these. For the rear passengers, rear passengers get very little air conditioning, whether heat or AC. They just have that one vent. So, um, and when you set the temperature, you can you can take off the sink setting so that your passenger can have um, a higher setting or a lower setting than what yours is. So. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. The the temperature of the of the heat is definitely warmer on this side of the, the vehicle, at least in mine. For the next leg of the trip, um, I think I'm gonna turn off all the heat. So turn off the air heater, turn off the seat heater. Um, of course, I'm gonna preheat the cabin while I'm here at the charger, but um, we'll do this leg uh, without the heater. And then, um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see if there's a significant difference there. at the supercharger after leg two. Let's check out the stats. All right. So 
The average was 396 uh, watt hours per mile. Um, again, 34.4 miles using 13.6 uh, kilowatt hours. So that's pretty good. Um, so that's right at about four kilowatt hours. I mean, uh, 400 watt hours per um, per mile. So uh, that's a difference of 40, 44 watt hours per mile. Um, so let's say you were driving 100 miles to the next supercharger. That means uh, the difference would be about four kilo, um, four kilowatt hours. Yeah, that was this leg of the trip was with no uh, air conditioning at all, no heat, no seat heaters, no defroster. Um, and uh, it got pretty cold. The temperature got down to uh, 44 degrees inside the cabin um, and probably would have gotten colder if I had continued. It's still only 11 degrees out. Although the sun is out uh, now and that actually does make a difference in cabin temperature when you have the sun um, even just a little bit shining through the windshield and you know obviously like this black um, the black dash is going to absorb heat and then conduct it to the air. But um, so I'm kind of wondering if my initial measurement on the first leg uh, where I was using the heater was a little bit artificially high because I was heating the uh, battery during half of it. Oh, and that reminds me, during this leg, I, I accidentally had the heat on a couple of times. I had touched the screen, the button on the screen by accident. So, um, but 90% of the time the heater was off. Uh, anyway, I think I'm gonna do the first loop again with the heater and just verify, um, well yeah, just double check it just so that I have two at baseline and then maybe, maybe it'll be a little bit lower uh, this time in energy usage because I'm not heating the battery, but I'd like to know the difference, so. All right, I think we are ready to head out. These cables are like so stiff when it's cold. No liquid cooling needed in the winter here. All right, so this leg of the trip, we're gonna keep uh, the temperature at 65. Okay, leg, uh, I guess this is a repeat of leg one. Here's the stats, 418 watt hours per mile. Again, over 34.4 miles. Uh, so that's a decrease um, from what we saw earlier. Uh, the first, let's see, the first one was 444. Um, it was a little bit colder then. It was uh, eight degrees with very little sun. Now it's um, a nice balmy 13 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, the sun is out, as you can tell. So there's a, that definitely makes the cabin a little more comfortable. So without the battery warming, uh, there's definitely less energy uh, used. Um, so with the heater, uh, again, set at 75 uh, with my sea heater going, um, and actually, it, uh, it was a little on the cool side, actually. It, it could have been, um, probably if I was just driving normally, I would have turned it up to probably 77, 78 or something like that. Um, but anyway, so with the heater, it used 418 per mile. Without the heater, it used uh, 396 per mile. So that's 20 to 25 uh, watt hours per mile um, extra uh, using the heater. So that's not too bad. That means if you drive 100 miles, um, that would be about two kilowatt hours of use. 
Um, so that's not too bad actually. I mean, relative to how much you use just making the car go, <laughs> um, it's not that much. So some factors to keep in mind here. One, um, there was there's no wind going on here. Uh, two, this was at a pretty much consistent 75 miles per hour, which is um, top of the freeway speed. Um, like I said earlier, there are some interstates where it's, the speed is actually faster, but uh, so that's that's a pretty fast um, speed. Um, I need to do some tests at some point in the future, like what the difference is, like if I went 65 miles per hour or something like that. Um, I bet that the uh, lowering your speed by 5 or 10 miles per hour has a greater impact than not using the heater um, over long distances anyway. So, but anyway, so this was at 75 miles per hour. So if you're going somewhere in cold weather and good conditions, which is what I was doing, and you know you're going to be driving at 75 miles per hour, bank on using at least uh, 400 watt hours per mile, um, probably 400, between 400 and 450 averaging, I would say. So um, if you're going to try to calculate out your route, those are some numbers to use. Yeah.